Do you have a gifting strategy? Do you do gifts near the end of the year? Well, I've got three gifts that you need to consider as part of your year-end giving plan. I've got that and more coming up. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm the host of The Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners right here at Corhorn Financial Group. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and smash that thumbs up button. It's the, it's the season of giving. I don't know when you're watching this, when I'm recording it. It's holiday season now, and um, it's, you know, that's also year-end season, and a lot of times when people are giving gifts. And therefore, as part of your overall financial plan, do you have a giving, a giving strategy? Sometimes... Uh, we, you know, people approach giving from a more spontaneous approach. Um, fantastic. Some, it's just part of their, um, their rhythms. Some, it's part of their overall financial plan and estate plan as a way to um, benefit people and causes they care about and also shelter from taxes. Or maybe is this the priority? And, and you orient your financial life so that giving comes first and then everything else comes after. Um, all of those, fantastic. And working with your certified financial planner who's doing comprehensive financial planning, you can develop the right gifting strategy to give and donate to the causes and people, again, that you, that you care about and do so in an efficient way. For most of us, you're not gonna give in order to get something, some sort of benefit. You're not gonna give to get something in return. You're giving because you care, um, either about that person, about that organization, and if you can do so in a really efficient way that also either helps you know, shelter taxes or, um, or, or, or kind of is more opportunistic, then all the better. That's just you being a good steward. So regardless of your situation, what are three giving strategies that you should consider this year end? First, and I think this one applies to most of us, and it doesn't even need to be part of a big giving strategy, but just you're giving financially from, you know, from yourself to someone else. And this typically occurs with kids, with children. Let me, so let, let me, let me read that. It typically occurs with adult children, where as you are retired or later in your years, you may give, write a check, give financially, to an adult child because you look at your estate, your finances and say, well, we don't need all of this and our kids are grown now and they don't need, you know, actual tangible gifts. Instead, here's a, a financial gift. Um, that maybe to grandkids, something like that. So um, as part of all of that, you can give it this calendar year up to $16,000 from you to someone else without needing to report it. That's the annual gift tax exclusion. So if you're writing a check or giving cash or, or whatever, making a transfer to an adult child or, or to a child or to a grandchild, you can give up to 16 grand per person and not even have to report it. That amount is going up to 17,000 for 2023. If you give below that amount, you don't need to report it. You don't, it's not taxable. You don't need to file a gift tax return. You don't need to tell anyone. It's fine, okay? And there's such a thing as gift splitting. So if you are giving money financially to, uh, to your, let's say, son, and they're married, right? You can give 16,000 to your son, 16,000 to your son's spouse. And so for a total of 32,000, that's gift splitting. If you're also married, then each of you, you and your spouse can give your son and your, your uh, in-law 16,000 as well. So totaling that up, 64,000 you can give without really needing to tell anyone. If you give more than that, you've got to report it. But for most of us, a giving strategy, just giving cash, writing a check, making a transfer, up to 16000 a year per person. Now, if you're giving to a charity, a 501c3, and you are age 70 and a half or older, or maybe your parents are, then a giving strategy you should consider is a qualified charitable distribution, which is transferring money, giving money directly from your IRA to that 501c3 charity. Transferring money or giving money directly from your IRA, cutting a check directly to that institution. Not having the check go to you, and then you giving it to that person, but or giving it to that, that uh, 501c3, going directly from your IRA there. Why? Because that 
qualified charitable distribution doesn't land as tax as taxable income on your tax return. This is a way of giving a gift, pulling money out of your IRA without it landing on your tax return. You might think, well, wait a second, who cares if it lands on my tax return? If I get the money first and then I give it to the charity, I get to write that deduction off. Well, you might not be able to. And if you do write it off, you're writing it off as part of your, your uh, itemized deductions and you might not get a full benefit of that. You might not get a benefit on your state return, those sorts of things. So having the money go directly from your IRA directly to the 501c3, that's a qualified charitable distribution, and it allows you to avoid tax on that transfer. The, um, the organization that you're wanting to benefit, they still get the check, they still get the money, they cash it and do whatever they would, just like if you were writing the check yourself. However, this money comes out of your IRA as opposed to out of your bank account. I would argue if you're, if you're age 70 and a half or older and you're donating money to, a, to church, to a 501c3 at all, you, even if you're not pulling money out of your IRA, you should have the money go from your IRA to this charity because you get this, you get this tax benefit. Note that you cannot do this qualified charitable distribution from your 401k. It's got to come from an IRA. It's only, it's only eligible from an IRA. And also note that once you're age 72 and you're required to draw a certain amount out of your IRA, you're allowed to use some of your required minimum distribution or all of it and have it be this qualified charitable distribution. So work with your certified financial planner. If you meet those qualifications, that's a great giving strategy you need to consider. And then lastly, say you're, you're giving to a, a 501c3, 501c3 charity, but you're not yet age 70 and a half and you're wanting to do so and give a lot, give a significant amount in one year so that you get above that itemized deduction threshold, that standard deduction threshold rather, and so that it benefits you on your taxes. Maybe you're gonna do a Roth conversion this year and you wanna do a big donation this year to help balance out some of that, that uh, the tax consequence. Maybe you've got a big bonus or, or your business did really well or whatever, you've got a big taxable year and you wanna make a big donation this same year to offset that, but you don't want to donate all the money directly to the charity today. How can you do that? How can you do that? Well, the solution is a donor advised fund. You set up a donor advised fund where you donate, where you contribute, where you deposit money into this fund. And in the year that you do that, that's when you get the deduction on your tax return. That's when you get to write it off. Okay. Um, and then you have the choice as to when you want to disperse money from the donor advised fund to the end charity or charities. You get to pick those uh, for the most part or have influence in them depending on which donor advised fund you choose. And you have control over the timing as to when those, those are, are, are sent. So pretend you're selling a business and you've got a lot of income this year and you're going to take some of those proceeds from the business and over the next 10 years, donate that to charity. Well, let's get that income deduction in the same year you've got to report that income as income, right? And so opening up a donor advised fund, donating a large portion or whatever your giving will be for the next several years into that donor advised fund matches that deduction in the same year you've got to report that income. And then over the next 10 years, or however you want to stretch it out, you can donate money directly from that donor advised fund to the end charity. So you're in a similar situation like that or want to give, give a, a bigger gift this year, maybe next year or in the future, setting up a donor advised fund is, a, is something at least you got to consider. So what's your overall giving strategy? Do any of these or maybe all of them make the cut? Are you giving financially to adult children, to other family members and need to do so, want to do so below that annual gift tax exclusion limit? Great. Strategize that, optimize that work with your CFP. Are you age 70 and a half or older and donating to a 501c3 charity. Consider a qualified charitable distribution. Work with your CFP on that. And depending on, in, depending on your situation, do you have high income and want to make lumpy contributions or donations to a charity, but still control having a, a smooth and systematic way of distributing that money to that end charity? Consider a donor advised fund. But all of that, work with your certified financial planner. These are just three potential approaches within an overall giving strategy your CFP can help. If you don't have a CFP on your team, you can contact one on my team, find us online, corhorn.com, that's corhorn with a K, wisemoneyshow.com, you can find us here as well, or send us an email, info at corhorn.com. All right, there you have it, go out and take your next wise step in your financial life.